All right, Tania, and we're continuing our series right now on Air Quality Awareness Week. And today we take a deep dive into some changes that are being made in the way the air quality alerts are issued and the way we look at the thresholds for issuing air quality alerts. Time to time, you will see the First Alert weather team sharing air quality alerts, which are based on thresholds associated with the air quality index. And this year, the way in which those alerts are determined will be changing. So the air quality index, or AQI for short, is a color-coded scale that tells you how good or bad the air quality is on a daily basis. And we use this to inform the public what the air quality is going to be, and our forecasts are based on this. AQI for short has six levels, green, yellow, orange, red, purple, and maroon. We see alerts issued when air quality reaches code orange levels, which means air quality is deemed unhealthy for sensitive groups. Clean Air Act requires the EPA to review the health-based standards for pollutants every five years. Recently, they did a review of the fine particulate matter standards for our area and decided to lower the threshold for what's deemed unhealthy from 12 micrograms per cubic meter to 9 micrograms per cubic meter. Means is that it's going to be uh, a little bit harder for us to meet that standard. Uh, right now, we're sitting probably right around where the standard currently is, uh, and. Our goal is to make sure that we get under that standard once it becomes finalized here in the next year. So what's going to happen with us initially is that's going to change the air quality index scale a little bit for PM2.5. Essentially what it's going to do is it expands the, uh, the yellow range, which means we might see an increase in the amount of yellow days. Now while we might have an increase in the amount of yellow days versus green days, in which air quality is good, that doesn't mean necessarily the air quality is getting worse. So what can we do to help improve air quality in our area? Traffic is becoming more and more of a, a central figure in our air pollution issues. Because if, over the last several decades, the industrial facilities have cut back their emissions significantly. And the traffic in the area is actually contributing more and more to the overall percentage of our air pollution. Matt says we can help curb this issue by carpooling to school or work, taking care of errands in one trip, or refraining from engine idling. So, you know, maybe don't use the drive through you know, go park in a spot, turn off the key to your car and go inside, grab the food. I found that myself a lot quicker a lot of times versus uh, sitting in the drive through line. Matt also suggests avoiding gas-powered lawn equipment and refueling your vehicle after dusk. For more information on the Air Quality Index, you can visit alabamacleanair.org. I'm WBRC Chief Meteorologist Wes Wyatt on your side.